We got problems. What? Jesse. Where's Jesse going? He just raised Chan for slips. Shit. Where's he going? Went to the car wash. Whatever, go fetch my car. Go fetch your car? We're not on your block anymore. You better watch who you talk to like that. Listener discretion is advised. It is time to play. You're listening to ELS. Let's go! Uncut. No doubt. Put your drinks up! Okay. okay. Now we come to the payoff. Let's rock. I killed the audio, so of course, you know, when you set things up different, of course, things are going to happen, so let me go ahead and put the rest of this up here for this episode of ELS Uncut. Welcome, everyone, to ELS Uncut. I am the Everett Lee. As soon as I can find myself right here on this, where am I? There I am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ELS Uncut, your weekend fuckery of nonsense, shenanigans, and all that, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get a round of applause for that right now. (laughs) Tonight on the podcast, joining me is none other than the voice of CCE Presents, the voice of the Deland Rock Metal Festival. And all that jazz. You know who I'm talking about, the host of the Chris Carnage Show. And final score, I want to welcome to the podcast tonight. And hello, Devin, for tuning in tonight. I want to welcome back. It's been a long time since me and him did anything. I want to welcome Chris Carnage. Let's get a round of applause. (laughs) Hey, fans. Oh, it's nice to hear that applause. But you know what? <clears throat> Chris Carnage is back here on ELS Uncut for another exciting episode and so much to talk to or talk about tonight, I should say. Don't mind me, I'm a little little excited. It's been such a long time. <laughs> I know, man. I know. At least tonight's podcast won't be like, you know, going down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> Or it could possibly go that way. Who knows, man? Who knows? Never know. (laughs) You don't know. But if you checked out the post we put out today on Podcast City Network, I want to give a shout out to PodcastCity.net. You can follow a lot of shows on PodcastCity.net, such as this one right here, ELS Uncut, Final Score with Chris and Craig, and the Chris Carnage Show, and much, much more shows on the network. And you can hit them up. On Facebook, Podcast City Network, and on Twitter at Podcast City Net. Hit the subscribe button to the YouTube channel of ELS Uncut. Well, you can check out that on there on Podcast City Network, YouTube, Uncut Live. Anything goes, Chris. That's right. Uncut, uncut, uncut. <laughs> it definitely is uncut, man. So what what have you been into this week, man? I know you've been busy with Final Score. What, uh, what's what been going on with you and Craig? Oh, man. Final Score has been taking off. If you have not seen Final Score or gave a listen to Final Score, 
<clears throat> I don't know where you're getting your sports news at this point. Sports Center, what's that? Who cares? Final score is where it's at. Go on and check on Final Score and download all of our latest episodes on Podbean at pcnfinalscore.podbean.com. And uh, we're only up to nine episodes. Episode 10 shall be coming out uh, this uh, this Sunday or Monday. Kind of depends upon how much Game of Thrones I watch. Uh, but <laughs> at the end of the day, though, it's going to be an exciting episode. It's our 10th episode. We hit double digits, and we have exciting news. Some milestones for Final Score that we'll be announcing when we drop that episode. And uh, maybe a little bit of a fresh look. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I like coats of paint. So, you know, see, it's exciting. But definitely check out Final Score because now we're also available on Google Play Music. We're available on Spotify. Oh, yeah. And we're available on the good old iTunes store. So definitely go on over, search keyword Final Score, give us a subscription, give us a like, check out our episodes because we got plenty to choose from, including uh, the downfall of the AAF, recent MLB action, NBA, NF, uh, NHL playoffs, NFL news. We got it all. So go check it out. Definitely is going to get your sports fix. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Something else people should check out this weekend. Tomorrow, this weekend, actually tomorrow is Saturday and Sunday is going to be busy because with you, you're, sh- you're mm-hmm. going to be showing up Sunday. You and Craig That's right. score. Yeah, I'm, I'll, uh, I'm definitely going to be coming down to the Daytona Beach Comic Con event on Sunday. If you want to catch me, I'll be there roughly at 11 a.m. Going to hang out for a few hours uh, with the Super Radio Brothers. Uh, going to sit down and talk with them about some cool stuff. And also, announcing now, my co-host Craig, a final score. He's also going to be there. So we're both going to come up, sit down as final score, talk to the Super Radio Brothers. And he talked to Rich about a little bit of sports. I know he's been dying to talk to me about sports lately. So Oh, yeah. See what we got going on, but yeah, definitely. Uh, Chris Carnage will be up there. Come check us out. Um, gonna have a lot of cool stuff going on. Super Radio Brothers uh, booth over there. So come yep. check it out. Yeah, they're the official host of the Daytona Beach Comic Convention. So it's gonna be April thirteenth, fourteenth, at from ten a.m. to five p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Well, on Sunday at four till four p.m. But it's it's gonna be great because Super Raider Brothers have been doing it the last six years, man. They've been doing that for like six years, and it's been great because they became the official host podcast for that convention over the Which last. Which is so six years. awesome! It is, it is, and that's where I met the Super Raider, Raider Brothers about shit mm-hmm. since t- 2015. That's yeah, they were the first show that we had that wasn't ours that uh, joined the network. Yeah, yeah, it was the first show. And then Imaginarium, and then the rest is history, man. And that's right. We got a lot of good content, a lot of good shows and stuff. And I've been updating the show, especially with uh, the Movie Nights podcast, which is great. You you check that oh, one yeah. out. That's oh yeah, that's a wonderful addition. And they do all kinds of things covering the the realm of movies, previews, reviews, uh, looking at movie news, all kinds of craziness. Uh, one of their fav- my favorite episodes of theirs is when they talked about uh, James Gunn coming on to do Guardians 3. Because I love the Guardians franchise, so yeah. I don't know. It's real, really awesome stuff. Really great guys. It is. It is. They they got some really good stuff on there. I was looking at their stuff this week, trying to get everybody updated. Robin Nelson, he's finally... I was wondering when he was putting out new episodes of Wrestle Popcast the last two days, he just threw them on my lap, and I'm like, Damn! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I ended up uh, taking them and putting them out there and sharing them today. And in between everything going on the last few days with updating Podcast City Network, I had some time last night. I know I was supposed to give you these show notes last night, but yeah. <laughs> Everett Lee <laughs> fell asleep on the couch and woke up and decided to watch a movie. I checked out. Finally, I got to watch. I turned on PlayStation View and I wa- was going through the on-demand movies and found A Quiet Place. I finally watched that, man. (laughs) Yeah, how'd you like it? It was pretty damn good, A Quiet Place, because the whole movie, it's about them being silent and quiet because you make a noise, you die. And whatever these things were that started, that took over and killed or whatever it is, they, they are triggered by sound. And I don't know what the hell they look like. They kind of remind me of something from Cloverfield. That's what the creatures remind me of. Something from Cloverfield and 
honestly, I mean, it had Jim from The Office. If you watch The Office, Jim was in it. He did fantastic. The cast mm-hmm. was great. And it was one of those movies, if you were a fan of Castaway, where Tom Hanks didn't talk much, that's basically what this movie is. And I can understand why people were upset about the ending, but also I can understand why, you know, people ex- didn't, I mean, they, they liked how it ended, but they didn't. And I understand why they didn't like how it ended, but I liked it. I enjoyed it because it left it open for more. If mm-hmm. more is to come. Saw a funny movie today too with my wife. <laughs> No, yeah, what'd you go see? <laughs> Daddy Daycare. <laughs> or not Daddy oh, Daycare. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Daddy's Home, excuse me. Oh, Daddy's Home. I was about to say, Daddy's Daycare has been out for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, Daddy's Home. I, I seen that today because me and my wife never really watched it. And uh, I'll tell you that my favorite part was the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the freaking motorcycle. <laughs> and it comes out the side of the house <laughs> to the car. I was laughing so hard. And then he's stuck through the wall. <laughs> Will Ferrell was like, put a shirt on, man. Put a shirt on. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's like, <laughs> punches the wall. comes straight down. <laughs> oh, too good. <laughs> that, was, that was hilarious, man. That was. And when he was at the basketball game, remember that? When he's sitting there, he's like, I'll take five beers. Oh God! And he threw the basketball, knocked out the cheerleader, and then threw it again, knocked out the <laughs> knocked out the handicap kid. <laughs> <laughs> just great, just great movie. We're gonna watch the second one probably in the next couple of days, but I mean that's on that's on on demand movies on PlayStation View, which is great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's definitely awesome. Yeah, <laughs> but. I know I'm going off the rails a little bit, but I just want to share what what I've been doing the last few days, and uh, we got a pretty good program lined up here. And one one last thing before we move on, um, did you catch the big news that was dropped today? Which news is that? You know, the force is strong with this one here, ladies and gentlemen. The quite force, strong. Quite strong. That's right. The episode nine trailer dropped today. Mm-hmm. And I tell you what, I am so excited. I'm one of the biggest Star Wars fans there is. So for episode nine trailer to drop and, and just to sit back and try and dissect the meaning. If you haven't seen it, please go and watch it now. It really uh, well, is very intriguing and opens a lot of questions that we already have on top of the questions. So it's definitely going to be really exciting. What are your thoughts on it? My thoughts is the title, the last, yes, yes. the last Skywalker. They never no, rise of the Skywalker. What rise? Is, yeah, the rise is the Skywalker. It, who, who are they referring to? Is it Ray? Is mm-hmm. Ray the last Skywalker? Because I'm thinking that, that you saw her with the hugging scene. Yeah, where in the trailer she's hugging what looks to be Princess Leia. Yeah. So, with tears, could have been a reveal of, hey, I'm your Maja. Just saying. Throwing it out there. Or at least related. Probably. Probably a distant cousin. That's what I'm thinking. What I've read on the line about this was that there's going to be a new enemy that's been way in the far regions of the galaxy. This is just rumor speculation that this new threat that's been so far away that um, Hayden Christensen who played Anakin Skywalker is making an appearance in this movie because for some reason um, Kylo Ren goes back mm-hmm. through the the archives of uh, of uh, well, who was it um, the Emperor when he was mm-hmm. before he became the Emperor he was Senator Palpatine I think it is or whatever it is Senator Pal- Palpatine yeah he he felt a greater force a greater <clears throat> stronger evil in the far dark side of the galaxy greater than him and he mentions it and he documented it and of course he shared this with Anakin about what he felt because it goes back to revenge of the Sith remember when he's talking about the ways of the Sith with mm-hmm. Anakin 
And I'm thinking that's going to have to tie in with this. And this new evil, it hasn't been talked about yet, though, but a lot of people has been speculating and reporting. And even on, I've been hit, I hit up Reddit a few times. And a lot of people in discussion threads on Reddit have basically said that there's this new threat that they're going to be introducing that's a greater threat than what Kylo Ren and the first, the last order or the, the order is. First order. Yeah, the first order is. It's a greater threat. And apparently he's going to go back through the archives and try to study and try to find out what this is. And mm-hmm. would now Ray, she she never knew her parents. They showed briefly nope. in the flashback of her getting dropped off on the planet when she was young. Yes, yeah, so it was just a shot, uh, if you remember back to The Force Awakens, of the ship taking off and her being on the uh, surface of, uh, 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 why can't I think of the name of the darn planet right now? Yeah. Of, uh, starts with a J, whatever, yeah. on the planet. Yes. And uh, she's being taken away uh, by one of, uh, one of the slavers. So with that, we never saw who her parents were. We were never really led with any kind of inclination of who it could be. It was just one of those, oh, your parents dropped you here and left you. But it's interesting when you think about it how the story is going to parallel because look at A New Hope. When you had A New Hope come out, what was Luke Skywalker left with? Left by his parents, doesn't know who they were, and left with his Aunt Ben and Uncle Owen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this, this would be pretty much parallel to that to return to the Jedi I'm thinking mm-hmm. of she's going to find out the truth and everything about her and yeah. when she does she's she's a Skywalker yeah it, we, it's going to come to the forefront because it's the only thing that makes sense it it definitely is and that's something that maybe we're we're, we're speculating already or maybe it's something one else who knows maybe exactly. they're throwing us off because and, you know and like to correct this. myself it was uncle ben and aunt peru i'm sure rich yes and the rest of the super raider brothers are probably screaming their heads off right now <laughs> by the fact that i just butchered that but that's okay yeah it's uncle ben and aunt peru yeah but either way though and there's gonna be a lot of parallels with how this works out and i think it'll be like a well they'll try to play it off as a big shocker where it's not a big shocker yeah but one thing i found very interesting with the trailer is beyond the stuff with ray beyond the whole skywalker angle and getting back to this new evil is the fact that they show a destroyed death pieces of Death Star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sitting in an ocean that it looks makes it appear that they are traveling towards it for, you know, XYZ reason. Yeah. So I find that very interesting, especially mixed in with, you know, the Palpatine laugh and the fact that they're going to the Death Star. All of it together, I feel, really gave it a real synonymous or a real uh, sinister type feel to what they're going to be encountering. And as we've seen before in past Star Wars uh, uh, chapters, that you end up with the spirits of Jedi and Sith alike yes. that will pop up. I wonder if maybe that could possibly be this new evil. Uh, maybe there's a way they found through the powers of the Force. If they could bring back life, don't you think they might be able to also invoke control uh, through a spiritual you know, nature uh, while be. even in that realm? So mm-hmm. I don't know. There's all kinds of ways that this could go, and that's what's really interesting to me is that you mm-hmm. really can't tell what this evil is going to be. And I think it's going to be something crazy, something we probably haven't seen before. And seeing how this is a J.J. Abrams film, you never know. Yeah, you never know. And that that Death Star, that's that planet that was in uh, in The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Something that powerful could destroy something that big. It makes you wonder, don't it? Mm-hmm. it? It does. It definitely does. It definitely does. Mm-hmm. So we'll definitely see once uh, the movie hits. It, it's still going to be a while. You know, sorry fans. That's just how Star Wars works, especially with Disney now at the helm as well. Yeah. But once we get to see it, it's going to be something amazing. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to drop this December. Uh, I don't know if they actually have a an official official release date. Um, I don't think they do. I don't think they do yet. It's December. One thing I wish they would have done was they should have released a trailer on May 4th. I feel that it's a little bit too soon right now. Yeah, I think they they should have maybe waited, but maybe they wanted to have it out uh, before uh, they got to Star Wars Celebration. Oh, and, and to update, Star Wars Episode Nine will be dropping December 20th of this year. Okay. <clears throat> so that, that'll be the official release. Uh, but when you're looking at it, 
I think maybe they have something else planned for Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. I think this was just a teaser, just to kind of get people hyped real quick. And, you know, basically the snapping of the fingers by Disney and the Star Wars franchise to start yeah. getting attention. And yeah. then once Star Wars Celebration rolls around, that's when they're going to punch you in the face. Because I think at Star Wars Celebration, I think we're going to have a full-length trailer that's going to hit us. And we get to sit and stew on that until they start coming out with more trailers later on in the year, which I think will probably end up being uh, this fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, very I, interesting. Yeah, interesting. It is. It is interesting to see where this goes and how it's going to develop over the next few months because, what is this, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, eight months. Eight months yep. to see what else happens. And, I mean, just... It, I'm I'm hyped up. I got goosebumps, mm-hmm. especially that scene that you talked about with the with the Death Star in the ocean. It's like wow. Yeah, and then, yeah, definitely too big to be the uh, the Star Killer base. Yeah, definitely had to be Death Star, and that's the thing too yeah. is that tied with Palpatine's laugh. I, I'm pretty sure it's the Death Star, but either way, we already know what kind of power was unleashed inside of those Death Stars. Mm-hmm. What happened between Palpatine and and Vader and Luke Skywalker? That's that and the fact that Palpatine died, presumably, when he was thrown down into the reactor by Darth Vader. Yeah. You never know what's going to come out. Yeah, you never know. Maybe he was the one behind Smoke, Smock, or whatever. You don't Snoke? Know Snoke, yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe he was the one behind well. him. You never know. You, you never, never know. know, man. I mean, just... <laughs> one, one thing we noticed, I... Familiar face we haven't seen since Empire Strikes Back and uh, Return oh, yes. of the Jedi. <laughs> Lando <laughs> driving the Millennium Falcon. He lost. <laughs> That's right, Lando Calrissian. <laughs> yeah, driving the with Chewie in the in the seat there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Along for the ride. So it's gonna be great. December twenty second, Star Wars twentieth. Thank you. Star Wars. That's why I'm here. Don't worry. I know. I know. I, I'm glad to have you here tonight because just with everything to talk about, I want to jump in to talk about what's going around the, the net this week. So, Oh, yeah. Uh, so let's jump into what's going around the net. Yeah. Chris? Yes? You need to put a smile on that face. <laughs> oh man! And using my face, uh, I'm in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You are no Mark Hamill. No, I'm not, because he does it better. But you know, one thing I just say is basically, let's just you know, just. Let's broaden our minds. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. And talk about the Joker movie <laughs> that came out. That's the jo- that's my Joker right there on a personal note. Jack Nicholson. I'm sorry. <laughs> or maybe I'm not. You don't know. You don't know. But Joker movie. The trailer dropped, I think, last this week it dropped, right? I believe so, yeah. I actually have not even been able to watch it yet. You ain't missing much, but from the data and from everything that I sent you about this, man, about the Joker movie. Now, Joaquin Phoenix, he did great. Walk the line. He's a great actor. He's he's done these off dark characters that especially in one movie he did back in the day when he was young in the 90s with Nicole Kidman to die for playing that mm-hmm. character right there and then playing Johnny Cash and other characters. I can't think of anything else I've seen him in that um, comes to mind right off the top of my head. But mm-hmm. Joker, it centers around the arch nemesis and its original standalone story that's not been seen on the big screen. It's It follows Arthur Fleck, a man described disregarded by society and is not only a gritty character study but a border cautionary tale the the film basically it's supposed to be t- taken place in the 80s all right and 
apparently there's going to be a young Alfred Pennyworth Pennington in it and a young Bruce Wayne, apparently. But actually, there will be a Wayne in it, which will be um, Bruce Wayne's father. Uh, Mm -hmm. Shoot, what the hell is his name? I got the stuff right here in front of me. Um, What is it? Thomas Wayne. It's supposed to be him. They said they're going to make Thomas Wayne more like a Donald Trump of the 80s business tycoon instead of like a doctor, which what he's been. And Martin Scorsese, he's kind of mixing it up here with this movie, making it more of a dark film that's really not related to anything in the DC universe going on right now. Just a standalone movie about the Joker. Because Joker, he's one of those ironic characters that is the yin to the yang to Batman. And he's always, always done the horrible and worse to Batman over the years. He killed Robin. He paralyzed Barbara Gordon in the killing joke. And then he made Batman laugh during the last part of that graphic novel there. And you can see on the movie that's been out for a while, the killing joke, where he made Batman laugh. And he's just one of those characters now, having a standalone movie like this, just not really related to anything, just going in a different take, What's your? what do you think about that? Well, with this movie, and what, what's interesting about it is that the budget was not very large for this movie. No. <clears throat> but against other superhero movies, this one was actually put on the low end at a production budget of around $55 million. So it honestly, it seemed like to me maybe the uh, production company didn't have a lot of faith in it. Because uh, this was a, a Warner Brothers picture, um, but another interesting thing about it is that Warner Brothers is apparently already working on another separate Joker movie uh, that's going to have Jared Leto supposed to be reprising his role. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's very interesting that Warner Brothers is trying to do two different ones. So this, to me, seems more like a an origins, you know, a look back. Obviously, like you said, it's supposed to take place in the 80s. So they didn't throw a lot in this. This is more, I think, for storytelling purposes than anything. It might even be used as a way to roll certain stories into other stories, but you never really know. But with the production value, uh, they didn't put a lot of money into it, so I'm not expecting a lot out of this. Uh, That, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it was directed by Todd Phillips, uh, who did The Hangover. Yes, and uh, he helped write this movie. He, he co-wrote the screenplay with uh, Scott Silver, who did The Fighter. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't, I just don't expect a lot out of this. I also don't feel like Todd Phillips is probably the right one to do this. But you know, he's more of a light-hearted film kind of guy. I don't think he really has what it takes to really capture what the Joker is. So I don't know. Who knows? I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree because they're I I just feel that their Warner Brothers is just cashing in and trying to do something mm-hmm. different, and unique that's out there from what superhero hero movies are and stuff. Because I I've always said this and I've always said it in the last few years, Marvel has got their shit down with movies oh, yeah. because they got Phase One, Phase Two, and here this week we're gonna see the end of. We're definitely going to see the end of um, my dog is like going crazy over by the door. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will see the end of the, the last phase for Marvel with our movie. But with the Avengers Endgame, DC has struggled over the years with, with big screen movies, especially like everything going on with uh, with Batman versus Superman, how that went. Fans loved it. Fans hated it. And a lot of people hated that, how that went about, mm-hmm. especially with uh, Justice League, how that went about. Um, who was it? Zack Zach Snyder. He basically, he had to leave during halfway when that movie was about almost done to go off for a family emergency. And who else then who created and directed, not created, but directed one of the greatest Avengers movies was uh, Joss Whedon of Buffy and Angel TV fame. And he he's great with group dynamics. He came in and finished that movie, but it still didn't hold up to what fans expected. Then Henry Cavell leaves Superman because he couldn't schedule in being an appearance of Superman on Shazam. 
He said, mm-hmm. I quit. I'm out of here. And he already stated in interviews what pissed me off was, I'm only here for the paycheck. He didn't throw himself into 100% like Affleck did or anybody else. And then they had mm-hmm. rewrites on this new Flash movie. You heard anything about the Cyborg movie? Nothing. Nothing. Aquaman was badass. And that did great. I still haven't seen it yet, but everything that positive feedback on that, there's some hope yeah. for DC. And now this right here, I'm afraid is going to be a bomb, man. I am. I don't know. We'll see. Definitely a lot of hype, but we'll definitely see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely I definitely want to, you know, check, check that out there. What the heck is that? Excited over there. Yeah. What is that going on there? That sounds like Allison Mack and what she was doing with the uh, with what's been happening with her recently, man. <laughs> We need a fire our production team. I know. <laughs> this is family entertainment. We're going to shut down my Twitch in no time. <laughs> that right there is probably what was been going on with Allison Mack right there. Uh, Allison Mack, if you're familiar with her, she was part of the show Smallville. And she basically just <laughs> she got caught, man. She got her. She got uh, in trouble. She could be going to prison <laughs> um, for sex trafficking. Oh, yeah. you, did you read about that right there, man? Alsa Mack. She played <laughs> yeah, totally this, Sullivan. This is crazy. Uh, she apparently was part of this huge sex trafficking uh, sting this huge case, and was accused to have turned women into sex slaves for a spiritual leader of a cult-like group called Nexum. Nexum. Uh, or, or Nexium. And <laughs> <laughs> she ended up coming, I guess, uh, she pled guilty, uh, and is going to be sentenced come September, but she's definitely looking to be going away for a pretty long time. Uh, she signed the plea agreement, which means she won't go to court. She's, it's really just going right to sec, uh, sentencing. But the leader of this cult, Keith Rainier, uh, along with uh, a wealthy heiress named Claire Bronfman and another member of uh, the inner circle for this cult, Kathy Russell, uh, are all going to end up having to go to federal court. This yep. is an insane situation, and it's definitely a far cry from what this woman uh, was known for. But it's so funny uh, <laughs> that when you look back at how many people that were part of Smallville <laughs> that <laughs> are really just having all kinds of issues. Uh, yeah. And what, the co-star Kristen Crook uh, admitted her involvement with Nexium or Nexium as well. But it said it was before the group was accused of ritual brandings and humiliating practices and... Uh, <laughs> And what they did to women, so it, it's yeah, it's wow, it's just just wow. Opening statements are scheduled for April 29th uh, for the trial. That's supposed to last about six weeks for everybody else that was involved, uh, and and the other people who didn't take plea deals. So it's but she, oh my goodness, that's just crazy, so so crazy. But Allison Mack is definitely gonna, probably going to be going to prison. Yeah. Uh, I would assume for at least, gosh. I mean, can we throw away the key? Is that is that is that allowed? <laughs> That's a Chris Carnage move. We throw away keys. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I believe so because she she's going away, man. She she definitely is going away. And what got me was uh, Kristen Kurt, who played Lana Lana Lang on Smallville. She was mm-hmm. involved with it too. And then of course you had uh, the guy who played Pete on Smallville, who was Clark's best friend few years ago man he got busted for a big los angeles drug ring on prescription yeah. pills i That's mean right. god dang i mean the only two people who's actually kept their nose clean and got in the business that stayed in the business was tom wielding he does stuff in behind the scenes now 
and he does a little bit of acting here and there. But did you got Michael Rosenberg, who basically just he he's there's only two people, and then, yeah, I'd say they're like the only ones that are active anymore, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, Erica Durant pl- uh, plays Kara Danvers' mother on Smallville. I mean, not Smallville, but Supergirl. They're they're the only three people who's actually still stayed into it. But here's here's my right. thing. How hard is it for an actor and actress to find work again after a TV show is done with? Well, it really depends upon the TV show, uh, the subject matter, how good they were on that show. Uh, you know, if there's other roles that happen to open up that have more fits to what that character or uh, that actor or actress can bring to the table. Uh, so it, it's really variable. But uh, to me, Allison Mack, uh, she hasn't acted since 2015. So with that, it's it's uh, honestly really hard to try and imagine that she was trying to get back into acting at all because she had already been removed for four years from the industry and you know obviously was knee deep into this cult and obviously trying to get uh, women turned into sex slaves. So yeah, uh, it's. I don't know. Who knows? But either way, she chose the way she wanted to go, and now she's going to pay for it in a federal penitentiary. I know. You got sex trafficking with act uh, movie stars, TV stars. Now you got now you and then of course Laurie Lock, uh, L- Laurie Lockman, who was on uh, Full House. She got in trouble for try- paying to get her kids into college. Yes, which was part of actually a wider uh, uh, operation onto itself of trying to bust people who were giving donations to schools to try and get their kids into uh, many different prestigious universities. So mm-hmm. it's quite interesting given how large that was. But, man, yeah. what are these actors and actresses doing? Just getting themselves in trouble <laughs> with all this dumb stuff. It, they are. They are. They you are. didn't make enough money. You got to try and do this kind of craziness. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I think... Um, we got. I found some audio actually from one of the sessions from Allison Max sex trafficking thing. I'm gonna play this right here. On on thunder sex. Oh my God. Hans River. Coming back? Administer the testicle clamps! Huh? What? Hey! Oh my god, man. You won't believe this. I can't believe it. Did you say Flugelkampheimler? Yes, yes. For the love of god, Flugelkampheimler. Are you sure? Yes, please. I can't wait to deal with the HR fallout from this episode. <laughs> <clears throat> Why did I take the, the that job? Oh Damn me. <laughs> All I gotta say basically is <laughs> Here's Johnny. But you know what, Chris? <laughs> I, I just got to tell you one thing. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, after seeing that, my mind yeah. just got warped right there. And the viewers listening is like, what the hell are you talking about? But you know what? There's nothing wrong with me. Nothing wrong with me! Nothing wrong with me! <laughs> There's not. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the, uh, the inner sounds of your brain just now? Yeah, that is. <laughs> that is. Hopefully, it don't come across. Fickle, 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 fickle. Fickle. I just hope HR just don't come at me and bitching and moaning and bitching and bitching and bitching. So basically, you're saying you don't want me to come bitching and moaning and bitching and bitching. <laughs> yes. I'll keep that. Yes. Moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But what else do we got on tap? Oh man. Well, let me get my head out of the gutter right here real quick. (laughs) (laughs) We were talking about Disney earlier and talking about what Star Wars and stuff is going on. Oh, yeah. Disney is 
my wife is telling me today, she was trying to tell me all this stuff. I'm like, uh-huh. She's like, I'm trying to tell you this. I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah, I already, I already know. I said, I'm going to be talking about it tonight. Disney revealed its first look for its streaming service coming out in November, man. What do you, what do you, th- what are your thoughts on that, man? Disney Plus is coming this year. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of a lot of rumblings about Disney Plus and everything it could offer, and uh, obviously they're going to take a lot of their properties and are trying to make a little mini spin-offs of a lot of things. I know Star Wars is at the front forefront of a lot of that, mm-hmm. uh, especially with like the Mandalorians and whatnot. But uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I really want to see what they pull off. Uh, it, it seems like these days everybody's coming out with some type of uh, monthly subscription service. Uh, so. It's interesting. I, I think it'll it'll bring a lot to the table, just given the vast and ever growing amount of properties that Disney now owns. Yeah, it it does because when Disney Plus goes, Netflix is going to lose a lot of their content. And my uh-huh. wife just pointed up right before we went live tonight. She said that on May fifth or May twelfth, Netflix will be going up to 12.99 they're going to be trying to focus on more content i guess but mm-hmm. one person on twitter they were talking a lot of people one person said that quote that disney investor meeting starts the ceo says that the deciding best approach wasn't difficult the best approach was to focus on creating great content and distributing it distributing it in innovating ways which i think is great because you're going to see a lot of Disney movies on there. You can watch everything from from Mary Poppins all the way to now, which I think is great. You have that whole mm-hmm. library right there to watch. You got Marvel on there, too. Captain Marvel, she's not going to be coming on Netflix. So basically the last Marvel movie that you can enjoy until all Disney content has been being pulled off. Well, actually, she might. Before November, she'll be on mm-hmm. Netflix. But then after that, they're going to pull all the Marvel stuff. They canceled all the Marvel shows like Luke Cage, Daredevil, Jessica Jones. They're gone. They can't do anything with them for the next two years on the contract thing. And, of course, I mean, they're they're going to have that Star Wars. They're going to have all the Star Wars stuff. They're going to have stuff on Pixar, which is great. Toy mm-hmm. Story. I'm going to watch Toy Story 1, 2, and 3. I can watch classic like movies like Coco or not Coco. I'm just looking right here. I can watch the movies like that now and then go back and watch movies like Snow White, uh, Beauty and the Beast, you know, The Lion mm-hmm. King, for God's sakes. And six ninety nine a month. What do you think of that? It's pretty cheap in comparison to a lot of other services. So I see a lot of people jumping on this bandwagon early and often. So definitely will uh, be interested to see how many people actually sign up initially. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's going to get a lot of attention, especially, like I said, with the big properties. you got the Pixars, the Star Wars, is, of course, Marvel, uh, everything that Disney already brings to the table with their entire animated lineup. So yeah. it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, exactly how this performs. But uh, I'm telling you now, it's gonna be it's going to be big. Mm-hmm. Even National Geographic, man. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. All these different yeah. properties, it's going to be huge. It is. It's going to be huge and stuff. They're going. They're going head to head with the streaming services like ESPN Plus, Hulu, uh, Disney. I mean, you know, Netflix. They're going across all these streaming services, which mm-hmm. I think is think is great. You know, more competition, more stuff out there because. I believe here in the next few years, cable is going to die, man. Cable's done. Cable is done. The only thing cable providers are going to be known for is giving you internet access. Or maybe mm-hmm. something like that may happen where they may change something where you can get some kind of package deal. It's all coming. It is. It is. Who? How many people own a landline phone nowadays? Mm, not many not many businesses own them businesses yeah that's it that's it business that's what they what they are pagers who owns pagers doctors remember back in the day everyone had a pager everyone yeah i don't think doctors have pagers now they probably don't maybe maybe some still do i don't know but that was that was something that was popular, and then they phased out two doctors and stuff. Everyone had a pager all the way from that guy down on the corner there with his pants leg rolled up selling drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a pager. Now everyone has a cell phone. 
So everyone's going to have a streaming service. That's what's going to come down to. Everyone's going to be having that right there. And speaking of streaming services, Netflix looks like they're going to be expanding into print. The report from uh, Bloomberg reported that Netflix plans on launching a magazine that won't be sold on newsstands, but it will be used to promote program programs and stars ahead of this year's Emmys. What do you think about that? Getting a getting an email with a brochure about Netflix. What's going to be coming? Meh. Yeah. Meh. I mean, come on. It's really only going to be coming out, like, I guess, as a 100-page inaugural issue, which will have, like, interviews and essays and features. <clears throat> but, uh, eh. Yeah. You're Netflix. You're Netflix. Just just stick to stick to movies and shows, please. Yeah. <laughs> and original movies. What do you think about, yeah. let me add this, what do you think about Spielberg's comments about how Netflix, ori- Netflix original movies should not be recognized for any kind of awards or grant or Oscars? I mean, I mean, you know, we are, we are talking about Steven Spielberg here, so yeah. you know, it, it, the man is a legend and has has directed and helped produce some of the most iconic films over the past thirty to forty years. But one thing I look at is that you're not the only one on the block, Spielberg. You need to move over because guess what? Streaming services have their own directors and actors and people they get too. They're no different than any type of film production company. So at the end of the day, I feel that if you make any type of a uh, film or TV series or anything that deals in that medium, that you should be up for an award. I mean, they have random independent filmmakers who go into all these different uh, film festivals and get awards for their stuff. Why shouldn't people on Netflix? Exactly. Exactly. Like I had this Wednesday, I had on The Everett Lee Show. I had a independent film actress on and who who's going to be starring and who starred in Hot Mess in a Wedding Dress which Stephanie Davis who I've had on the show a couple of times before she's right now I was looking up on Facebook right before we started tonight she ended up she's she's on the road right now hitting film festivals uh, Wednesday night when I was interviewing the star of her first feature film she was in Atlanta promoting it at a film festival. And then April 28th in Tampa, they're going to be doing a film festival promoting it. And, of course, I agree with you right there. Spielberg's just, come on, man. You got to realize, yeah, you're great. You're legendary and stuff, though. But you got to keep up with the times. Mm-hmm. You got to keep up with the change. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. But saying something like that is kind of pretty E.T., <laughs> I'm sorry I had to throw that in there <laughs> Let's just get stupid We about to get stupid <laughs> Oh man It's like uh, Black holes Black holes are real I'm not talking about the one That uh, you You basically get violated in prison, you know, like Allison. Whoa. (laughs) HR, HR. (laughs) But black holes for real. Yeah, black holes are real. Yeah, for realsies are real. They are. What'd you think of that picture right there, the black hole? I mean, I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's a fuzzy picture and all this, all that. Guess what? You know what that is, though? It's a black hole, and it's a step in the right direction for astrophysics and astronomy alike, and I think it's going to be amazing. This is a once-in-a-lifetime type of thing because we are still a very feeble species. A lot of people don't realize this. Uh, we're not living on other planets. We're not, we don't have flying cars. We don't have miracle drugs for everything. So people need to understand, you know, being able to find something like this is really, really huge. Mm-hmm. And uh, NASA helped unveil some of these photos uh, just this past Wednesday. And scientists around the world were going insane for these because this is the first ever time we have ever been able to take a photo of a black hole. Yeah. And it, it was really crazy. It was, and they were able to get this image using a network of radio telescopes that were linked together to form basically a single earth size observatory to be able to get this shot. And this shot is of a, a monster black hole. It's 55 million light years away from Earth uh, in a neighboring galaxy called M87. 
Uh, it's also nicknamed uh, uh, Poe uh, by some of the members of the team. Uh, or sorry, Poe He. Sorry, I got to make sure I pronounce it right. It's a Hawaiian word meaning uh, embellished dark source of unending creation. Nice. Uh, but but they're saying that the black hole is six and a half, six and a half times or sorry, six and a half billion times as massive as our sun and has a diameter of 24 billion miles. Uh, so thing is definitely big as can be, but hey, man, we got black holes now. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely have black holes. We definitely do. And then did you, uh, did you see the memes on uh, Twitter about the black hole? Oh, I've seen so many. I enjoyed one today just because, you know, I'm a guy who likes to work on his own vehicle. And it said, oh, astronomers have taken a deeper look into the black hole. And as it morphs in, it's a 10 millimeter socket. <laughs> they, 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 they're referring to the black hole is the eye of Sauron from Lord. Of oh, yeah, that's the big one I've seen today. Oh, yeah. I love that one right there. I love that one. And then there's been ones with, um, what do you call it? Uh, like, I had... Shoot, I had one that was like hilarious, man. I, had, I love the screenshot. Like they had, you know, ones that was like Soundgarden, Black Hole Sun, and then just different things. <laughs> I just oh, yeah. laughing my butt off on that stuff. <clears throat> it, was, it was freaking hilarious, man. And <laughs> I, I I love that stuff there. And <laughs> I definitely like to see that one there of with the with the socket. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> But one thing, one thing um, I'm really looking forward to next, this Sunday, dude, this Sunday, Game of Thrones returns for his la its last season. It's last oh, season, man. Oh, yes. It's all she wrote. It's all she wrote. I am so excited for this. Yeah. What, what, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to okay. happen in this season? Who, I mean, <sighs> just to show you, just so people know. Just so that people don't think I'm talking out of my ass in any kind of way. I am a diehard Game of Thrones fan. Literally, there was about two and a half months ago, they were like, I saw this thing that said, you know, watch all these episodes, you know, one a night all the way up until uh, the new season debuts. You'll end with the season finale of season seven the night before you have to watch season eight. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I finished that a month and a half ago. So... <laughs> I have been just like chomping at the bit. This is going to be amazing. If if you have not seen any of the Game of Thrones, you need to smack yourself in the face as hard as you can. Yes. Look in a mirror and say, "What am I doing with my life?" And then you need to go walk over, <laughs> you sign up do. for HBO, and watch this because Game of Thrones literally is 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 monumental to the realm of television and movie entertainment. Yeah. And Game of Thrones taught me in a very important lesson: never get too attached to a character. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. But either way, though, this season's going to be insane. There's a lot of speculation uh, surrounding the Battle of Winterfell. Uh, what actually is going to happen when everybody makes their way towards King's Landing after? Uh, a lot of speculation, if, if anybody saw us, the very end of Season 7 and a lot of the information that was, that was uh, learned by all audiences thanks to uh, Brandon Stark... And, it, it, oh my gosh, my mind is just blowing up right now. Like, there's so much that's going to happen. Presumably, though, the Battle of Winterfell is supposed to be a win for the Army of the Dead. And that is something a lot of people are finding out. It's one of the biggest rumors is that the Battle of Winterfell will be lost by men. And that they will end up having to fall back to, eventually, King's Landing. Because the dead are just going to keep marching down the King's Road. Really? Really, that's when, the big. That's the big speculation. Winter, and winter that, fail. Winter fail is gonna fall. Yeah, so they think that winter fell will fall. Now, if you've read any of the books of uh, the story of Fire and Ice, people know about a certain little detail that has been left out of this entire series to this point. Okay, and that and that is Catelyn Stark. Yeah, Catelyn Stark in the books came back with the army of the dead. Uh, oh my goodness, I cannot even think of her name. What was her name? Oh, that's right. Lady Stoneheart. Yeah, Lady Stoneheart. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I have a feeling that is probably going to come into play. If you do watch the trailer, you notice Arya Stark is running uh, away from something. Doesn't appear to have a weapon or anything, but is running. But it's not just running, but it's fearful. Yeah. Uh, 
I think that could be because she is running away from Lady Stoneheart. So you think, it's you very think, interesting. You think they but, brought her back to life? Well, maybe per se. Per se, she'll she'll be a part of the army of the dead. Oh, possibly a White Walker. Who knows? How? Well, they they buried her, didn't they? Didn't they? At, at the red red wedding, she died. We don't know. Well, we never saw what happened to the body. That's that's true. That's true. Because all we saw at the end of the red wedding was the fact that you had the hound trying to smuggle back out Arya Stark at this point, yeah, and them trying to escape. We know that uh, Rob Stark was beheaded, as was his wolf. Yes. Uh, we know that many died, but we did not see what happened to many of these bodies. So, presumably, it was shallow graves for all, but mm -hmm. we won't know until the army of the dead comes a knocking. Well. Right around that time and afterwards, there was a report that a lot of people are upset that afterwards in the season four, because that was in, that was towards the end of season three, right? That was like the episode yeah. before the final of season three. Episode in season four. Yeah, the episode was called uh, The Rings of Castamere. I think that was season three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. A lot so, of people. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was like episode eight, I think. Yeah. A lot of people are upset because fans who read the book, they're like, where's Caitlin Stark? Or why is she not coming back? And the producer's show said, "Why we don't need to bring her back as a zombie. We don't need a zombie on a show because there's another show that features a lot of zombies. Talking about The Walking Dead. And that's one yeah, thing they kind of we, deviated away But we have from. the army of the dead, so yeah. what's the difference? You know what I mean? Exactly. I think they're going to do it just to mm -hmm. compete with how The Walking Dead has done with the ratings. Even well, that, I, I think it's also they're going to do it just because of the fact, why would you want to miss that tidbit? Because presumably we never saw what happened to Littlefinger's body either, and I've seen a lot of memes and jokes about Littlefinger coming back. So... There's a lot of different things that could happen with this, but guarantee we're going to see characters we know they are going to be a part of the Army of the Dead. Guarantee it. That could be. They said the battles, especially with Winterfell, it's going to be nothing. It's going to be much bigger battle than Battle of the Bastards. Remember mm -hmm. that one? Yeah, yeah, Battle of the Bastards was one of the largest battles yeah. they had had to that point in Game of Thrones. But this... The, the Battle of Winterfell with the yeah. Army of the Dead is supposed to be the largest battle in the entirety of the Game of Thrones saga. Yeah. I, I believe it because I feel that this this battle, because even uh, the guy who plays uh, shoot the, uh, the imp... Um, Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Peter Dinklage said, this battle makes Battle of the Bastards look like a, looks like a carnival. Mm -hmm. So you know it's going to be big. You know because from start to finish, it's going to be battle. It's going to be battle. Now here's here's something, Chris. Who's taking the throne at the end of the series? Who do you think? Well, see, that's the interesting thing is because we know who the true heir is. We know who the heir apparent is, and we know who currently holds the throne. Yeah. So there's a lot that's going to happen. Because one thing that we need to keep in mind is that with, with Season 8, it is only going to be seven episodes, yeah. which is less than the usual ten they've had in every season. However, all of these episodes are going to be like a movie. They're all going to be an hour, hour and a half long, and are going to be like full cinematic features. So think of it like watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. There's going to be seven different, basically, movies to season eight of Game of Thrones. So to sit and try and, and, and really project what's going to happen, and it's going to be so hard because with the Army of the Dead, you don't know who's going to end up being the next life claimed. That's that's true. That's true. I I still think John or Daenerys, one of them is going to take the throne. That's, well, that's an that's, interesting thing, too, who? because a lot of people, if you watch season seven all the way to the finale, you know about who Jon Snow truly is yeah <laughs> and how that will impact daenerys yeah they'll f they'll find out and maybe they'll be like ah oh, fuck it <laughs> you know i mean look look at uh the mad queen and uh and uh jamie. oh you mean uh, uh jamie and uh yeah um what is it siri yeah i can't remember she's yeah. crazy so yeah the crazy Cersei, there it is yeah 
Cersei. Yeah, look at them. Look at him. But, you know, Jamie, I have to say, has made a one full 180 with his character. He mm-hmm. has. He's basically like, you know what? This is wrong. I'm staying away from it. And like in the trailer, he's like, I'm I, I'm fighting for the my the people, the living. That's who he's fighting for. So that's I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. I definitely do. But we'll see this. The opening, the the episode Sunday, the beginning of it. I know when that ends, dude, we're going to be like, no, we want more. <laughs> <laughs> we know we want more. It, no one's going to want it to end because you're going to keep going. And then it's just like, damn, man, you know. <laughs> Oh yeah, it, it is. It, it is. It's gonna. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Cannot wait. Cannot, Cannot wait. wait. Cannot wait. Right now, I want to take a quick two minute break here and give a word to our sponsors of Podcast City Network. You get over to podcastcity.net to catch the latest episodes and content and podcast on podcastcity.net. You can follow them over on Facebook, Podcast City Network, and of course on Twitter at Podcast City Net. Send a tweet to them right there. Subscribe to the YouTube channel of Podcast City Network and keep up with the latest content and shows such as the ELS Uncut, the Everly Show, Final Score, and much, much more on the page. And right here on twitch.tv slash Podcast City Network, make sure you subscribe and follow when we go live during the week like we are right now. So when we come back, we're going to jump into some wrestling. And then we're going to head to the finish line on ELS Uncut. Stay tuned. The following support and sponsor, Podcast City Network. City Limits Tap Room, Sports Bar in the Land, Florida, has brew on tap, sir food, the grilled cheese is excellent. For upcoming events check out City Limits Tap Room on Facebook.com slash City Limits Tap Room. Atlantic Sounds has thousands of new and used vinyl records and CDs. If they don't have it they can order it for you. Same location since 1982. For more updates on what's new check out Atlantic Sounds on Facebook.com slash Atlantic Sounds Vinyl. Sports Sanity Customs have worked with organizations from custom embroidering polo shirts to jerseys for your kids baseball team. They do it all. Armed with state-of-the-art equipment and an in-house design team, they are equipped to take on your next project. Visit their website to learn more, sportsanitycustoms.com. Visit Sports Sanity Customs on Facebook.com slash Sports Sanity Customs. Three Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video, photography and other forms of media. Everything from t-shirt designs to websites. Visit Facebook.com slash 3 Count Design for more. Demo Blast Studios, an explosion of imagination. Original artwork, podcasts, video, apparel and more. Visit DemoBlastStudios.com. Visit DemoBlast Studios on Facebook.com slash DemoBlast Studios. The best family entertainment pro wrestling show in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky's own wrestling brings quality family event wrestling to a town near you. Kentucky's Own Wrestling offers a ladies division in wrestling and a training school. Kentucky's Own Wrestling is the current longest running southern promotion. Visit facebook.com slash Somerset Kentucky's Own Wrestling. All supporters and sponsors are brought to you by Podcast City Network. You're listening to ELS Unkind. All right, I am back. I am back, and Chris is back. I can see him sitting right there looking down. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in and listening to ELS Uncut tonight. Well, Chris, should I cue the wrestling intro? Ah, yes. All right. Sorry, I was enjoying my tasty beverage. One, two, three.
in ring report for ELS Uncut. You know, I don't mind talking about wrestling, but I'm glad we mixed it up tonight because it's so great to talk about different things and getting feedback from you tonight. It's just like the mm-hmm. old Everly Show podcast, man, back in the day. Oh, yeah, man. Those are good times. Yeah, definitely good times. At least you don't have to worry about anyone coming through and jumping you while you're trying to take a swig of beer. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, ah, too many man. times. I know. <laughs> You don't have to worry about that because you you have a thirty three and third chance of not getting hit <laughs> by <laughs> something tonight. <laughs> but you gotta love technology, man. You definitely love gotta love technology. And one thing, one thing I want to talk about is last week on the deleted wrestling podcast, we did that prediction show of WrestleMania 35 with uh, Kentucky's own wrestling United States champion, the Chris Rose. I want to know the predictions and who we thought was going to win and stuff. Were you right? And was I right? And was he right about things? Oh, man. I'll tell you what. Looking down this list, though, I mean, I know we got some of this right. Obviously, some of it was kind of a given. Uh, Looking at the very first match, uh, the Cruiserweight Championship match between champion Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. Uh, I think all of us did choose Buddy Murphy to win that match, but Tony Nese came out on top and an actually a pretty decent match. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that definitely was a surprise. So hats off to Tony Nese. Yeah. And then the Women's ro- ro- uh, Battle Royal, Carmella <laughs> winning it. Yeah, n- none of us got this one. None <laughs> no, of us. No, we, we didn't. And then the men's. The men's. We actually we got that right because we all picked Strowman. Braun. Well, yeah, just one. because the only buildup yeah. was between Strowman and the two guys from SNL, so yeah. that one was kind of a given. Who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so yeah, we were right about that. And then the. Uh, First match that was that was a surprise right there the universal title match because I guess Lesnar had to go to Las Vegas to get ready for UFC. Seth Rollins yeah. versus the Beast. We we picked Rollins, didn't we? Yeah, all of us. I, I actually picked Lesnar. I thought he yeah. would hold this uh, for another month uh-huh. just because I thought the uh, fight with him and John Jones wasn't going to be happening till later, much later in the year. So yeah. Uh, that ended up not coming to be. So with that, Seth Rollins ended up going over. I hated this match though, just because. The match had Lesnar coming out. I, I thought kicking off the show with it was great, but everything else about the match sucked. Lesnar jumping Seth Rollins before the match starts, and then once the match starts, Seth Rollins magically wins, gets three stomps in a row, and now he's your universal champion. No storytelling whatsoever, and really nothing to this match. It, it was honestly kind of disappointing. But I did like Alexa Bliss snapping her fingers and having Hulk Hogan come out in the beginning, so yeah. that's nice. Yeah, and, and you know when Paul Heyman was running down right Passed him straight to the ring. Mm-hmm. That that right there, Hogan didn't know that was happening. So that reaction was not a work. It was real. No, that yeah, was, it was all genuine. That was genuine because everything changed at the last minute. There, you know, that's how it is in the business with wrestling. Stuff changes. They, at five thirty, they decided to put that match on first. You know. But oh yeah. Then, but then. What else was there? The the uh... well, you, well, you had the uh, AJ Styles Randy Orton match. That one uh, actually was a pretty good match. Yeah, but uh, I think was. I know I took AJ Styles in that match, and AJ Styles did go over. I know one of you two had Randy Orton. I think it was Chris Rose, yeah. our uh, KCW United States Champion, who picked Randy Orton because he is a big Randy Orton fan. Yeah. So I don't remember who you chose though. I I think I chose uh, I think I chose AJ when in that one. I believe so. So, yeah, that was that was my pick. He picked Orton. You picked AJ, right? You said AJ. Yeah, AJ won that one. And then what else? What other match did we have after that? Uh, let's see. Looking down the list, you had a uh, Shane McMahon and the Miz and the False Count Anywhere match was, which uh, I was utterly surprised at this yeah. match. Uh, we ended up. We all called that there would be a really crazy high spot by Shane. Uh, ended up being by both of them. Yeah. Uh, and this match really like reminded me of Undertaker versus Triple H from WrestleMania 17 when they had that false count anywhere yes. match. Yes. And it, it was great. And you had the uh, the superplex 
uh, by the Miz to Shane McMahon off the uh, the TV camera scaffolding yeah. that ended up going through some type of platform, but Shane McMahon landed on top of the Miz and ended up getting the pin for the one, two, three. Yeah, the craziest spot out of all that, the falls count anywhere. The craziest spot I got to throw this in there was when the Miz took that freaking laptop. It knocked the shit out of Shane, and he flew, oh, yeah. hit the golf cart and fell off that. Oh, my God. I don't know how the guy's still walking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. That was insane. Yeah, uh, my wife gasped, man. She was like, she was like this. Yeah, she was like that, oh, yeah. man. That was basically like, wow. But, but, then, but another interesting match that we had, you had the Usos. Uh, against Alistair Black and Ricochet and The Bar and Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Mm -hmm. uh, Four-way tag match uh, for the titles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, and that match was interesting at best. It was uh -huh. definitely a throw-together match. Yeah. Uh, but the Utos did go over, so you know, which was, I think, all of us uh, expected to happen. Yeah. Except Usos. for me, which I predicted Alistair Black and Ricochet would go over. And after Alistair Black and Ricochet did not win the NXT tag titles, I thought it was going to happen, but a loss, it did not. Yeah, that that didn't happen. And then what else? What else? What else? What, what was well, the other let's, match? Let's not forget the four-way women's tag team title match, yes. where you had the Iconics taking on uh, Nia Jackson, Tamina, Natalie, and Beth Phoenix, and of course our women's tag team champions Bailey and Sasha Banks. Uh, this match was uh, uh, pretty good. A lot of interesting spots. Beth Phoenix definitely got involved as well. Yes, loved the entrances. Uh, Bret Hart, I think, even came out uh, with Natalia, and it was really great. But in a surprise upset. I said that uh, uh, Bailey and Sasha were going to retain. You said Bailey and Sasha were going to retain. I'm pretty sure Chris Rose said Bailey and Sasha were going to retain. The Iconics pull the upset and become the new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. That that right there, we were wrong on that one, man. It was like, what? oh yeah, what? I mean, yeah, that <laughs> was that was. There were some good spots with that. Beth Phoenix, man, it looks like she hasn't lost a day in the ring. Oh, she really hasn't. Honestly, no. she looked great. Uh, she she looked like she had never left because she, yeah, remember she hasn't wrestled a match in six years. So yeah. for her to come out there and put on that type of performance was really amazing. Yeah, it was. It was. And then after that, we had the Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston match, mm -hmm. and we all picked Kofi. Right. Yep, and Kofi did yes. win, and it was amazing. Yeah, it was. I loved the match. The match was an instant classic. Uh, Kofi going over, also amazing. Hats off to him, and I love the fact that at WrestleMania that they did Kofi right and had a, a new WWE Championship belt with his nameplates already on him, ready to go for when he won the title. Exactly. I, I was glad they got rid of the cardboard championship. And I guess <laughs> Daniel, Daniel Bryan, got injured during sometime during that match. That's, how, that's yep. why he was on SmackDown on Thursday. So he may be away for a while. That's why they didn't build up any program or anything. Just Kofi celebrating on Raw and then on SmackDown. Now, we Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, that was... All right. I felt like I was watching a Monday Night Raw match. And then, of course, Raw yeah. wins. And then that wasn't really anything. And then we had we had Kurt Angle's retirement match, which I felt could have been so much better. <sighs> yeah, they definitely fell short yeah. on Kurt Angle on this one, allowing Baron Corbin to actually have this match. And what really upset me is that the fact that the one person he should have wrestled, John Cena, ended up coming out uh, to interrupt Elias in his yes. big performance at WrestleMania, which <laughs> was a cool segment, don't get me wrong, but he should have been wrestling Kurt Angle. Yeah, yeah. He, he should have. But what do you, what'd you think about seeing old Ruthless aggression, Cena coming out, man. You know what I love is that Cena was in full character. He was in full Doctor yes. of Thugonomics, <laughs> and he came out with the scowl on his face, and you know he was wearing the jersey and the hat, the hat, and the whole thing. Came out with the pump shoes on, and you know really was spitting some bars at Elias. It was it was really great. It was really <laughs> cool to see Cena really doing that character again. For the last tw almost twenty four hours. I've been letting the WWE Network play in my bedroom. 
and I've been playing episodes from uh, during the ruthless aggression area when Cena was starting mm. to get hot, <laughs> and I was been watching oh, yeah. it on and off and stuff, and I've been laughing at all the stuff that's going on and stuff. Great, great time, great time. Didn't realize how great For stuff sure. and everything was. Now, after that, uh, that segment. We had uh, the squash match, which was like not even a minute with Samoa Joe retaining over Rey Mysterio. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a slap in the face yeah. to Ray Ray. Uh, Ray Ray's been around this industry an extremely long time, especially with the WWE. This is like his third or fourth run with them. So I feel like to kind of disrespect him, even though this kind of was a thrown together match, it only came together, I think, about two or three weeks ago. You still should have given Ray a little bit more respect than that. But. Mm-hmm. To each his own, Samoa Joe, still your United States champion. Yep, yep. Ray, Ray must still be hurt because that's why they squashed him real quick. Because It only makes sense. Yeah. And then you had Triple H versus Batista. What did mm. you think of Triple H's entrance, the Mad Max thing? I thought that was fucking badass, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I thought that was really badass right there having that entrance there and the match itself if you noticed it was a no holds bar match but they didn't mm-hmm. follow and do anything like what Miz and Shane did because you already seen that exactly and, and with Flair coming out with the sledgehammer helping out Triple H and him using the sledgehammer pedigree one two three that was it and then the day after Batista got on Twitter and said he's done He's done. Yeah, he retired. He, he retired. He was done. He retired, and it's over for Batista. If you really think about it, dude, because honestly, with the way that he he started out in Evolution, Triple H helped him along the way. And then after Evolution, he basically went out on his own, became big. He left, came back, and basically to wrap up his wrestling career, it's like you started with this guy with your career you ended he ended his career with this guy with triple h perfect way to go out yeah perfect perfect way to go out definitely definitely and then we had the what finn balor bobby lashley match which i was finally we get the solid the demon come out yeah but i feel that everyone all the energy was kind of almost going out of the arena at that point or like yay you know the demon that was it and then he captured the Intercontinental Championship, which was awesome. I th- For I'm, sure. I'm I'm glad that Finn grabbed it and caught it, and I was happy to see the demon. I loved his makeup and how he did that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It looked, it looked really good. Uh, the match itself, though, wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. It also wasn't, excuse me, the longest, but I think some of that had to kind of do to the fact that uh, this match was so late, and uh, a lot of people were kind of uh, anticipating the triple threat match. So, not too surprised at how this went, and obviously Finn Balor uh, getting the Intercontinental title, well-deserved. Yeah. And then, last but not least, we had the mm-hmm. triple threat match with... Yes. We we all picked Becky to win this one, and what we happened? We did. She won it, but... But not- there's controversy around this match. Yeah. And uh, I read, actually, uh, here recently... Looking it up through uh, news.com.au, uh, Ronda Rousey was not happy with the outcome of this match. Mm-hmm. So, to look at the behind the scenes of this whole show, uh, the ending was not supposed to be the ending. Yeah. So, when you saw Becky Lynch get the crucifix pin fall on Rousey, a lot of people did cite the fact that you they noticed she kicked out. Her shoulders were not on the mat, but they still counted the three, and that was the end of the match. Uh, if you also notice when you watch Raw the next night, when they show the replay of that, it says black screen and you hear the one, two, three being counted. And then the next image they show is Becky Lynch with the titles being Becky two belts. But yeah. that's uh, not how it was supposed to end. Apparently what happened was that it was a mix of errors between Rousey Lynch and the official that ended up leading to this. Uh, the original finish was supposed to be, Becky Lynch uh, hitting the disarmor on uh, Charlotte Flair for the win. So uh, many were very upset with this to the point where Ronda Rousey threw the belt uh, while backstage, uh, as did Becky Lynch. So a lot of people were very, very upset uh, backstage with how this match had ended just because there was so much more planned and so much more that was supposed to happen. And given the fact that this was 
the first time women were able to main event Mania, now they feel that there's a little bit of a uh, a blemish on mm-hmm. this historic historic match. Yeah, yeah, because there were some botches here and there with what went on, and a lot of people were saying at during the find out to plan the finish with everything. A lot of people wanted her to cement, Ronda to cement, but however, a lot of people felt, why should a strong MMA presence tap out to a wrestler? And then a lot of people said it should be pinned. It was a split decision. But of course, we know who made the decision at the end of the day, which was Vince, and Mm -hmm. it was supposed to be a pin, and it didn't go like it was. And yeah, like you said, there was a lot of miscommunication and everything and stuff. And of course, Becky went over. She won both belts. And it's going to be interesting to see where she goes from there. All in all, on a scale of 1 to 5, what do you rate WrestleMania 35? Honestly, as over, as an overall, it wasn't a bad show. Uh, it just had certain miscues, uh, little things that were kind of thrown together. So on a scale of uh, 1 to 5, I give this, uh, honestly, I give it a nice solid 4. Mm-hmm. Uh now, it wasn't a great mania, but it wasn't a bad mania either. A four, I think, is respectable for a for a mania of this yes. caliber. That was seventeen matches. You had plenty of wrestling to go off of with this, so definitely wasn't disappointed. But uh, also left a little wanting in some areas. So yeah, four out of five. Four out of five. I agree with you right there. It was better than last year's mania. Honestly, oh yeah, it was. It was a lot better. There's a lot going on. Uh, match of the night. Ooh, match of the night. Honestly, <laughs> looking through all this, I'm going to have to go Kofi Kingston, Daniel Bryan. I felt like the story that they told was amazing. The amount of support that Kofi had in the crowd was so behind him. It was really amazing how they worked this match. And obviously, Kofi going over and getting his first ever WWE Championship win. And many do not know, Kofi Kingston also became the first ever African-American WWE Champion. Really? So hats off to Kofi Kingston. I didn't. I didn't realize that. I I didn't know he became the first African American to win the WWE Championship. So yep, and I know there's some people are probably screaming, "Oh, what about guys like Booker T and this and that?" But those guys all held the World Heavyweight world. Title. Yes, not the WWE Title. No, you no, know, not WWE Title. And of course, uh, Billy Superstar Billy Graham. You hear about everything he was saying and stuff about Kofi mm-hmm. and Brian. It's like, come on, man. Come on. Yeah, those, yeah those that match was, was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Those days are over, man. Hit the gym. <laughs> hit, the, hit the fucking gym, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now, we were talking about the women's tag team. Okay. The women's tag team with with the, the Fatal 4-Way with the women's tag team titles. Sasha Banks, Bailey against Nia and Tamina and Beth and Natalia. Apparently, mm-hmm. Sasha Banks was not happy with how everything went down because apparently she tried to quit WWE due to the title change decision. Coming from my source here, WrestlingInc.com, said that Sasha tried to quit WWE over the, the WrestleMania 35 weekend, according to one higher up a source to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. It was noted that Banks felt blindsided when she found out last minute that she and Bailey were dropping the, the tag titles at WrestleMania 35 on the Fed four way, and it saw the Iconics captured the title. The uh-huh. titles. Pank, Banks reportedly under the impression that WWE would be giving them a chance to have a strong run with the titles to bring credibi- credibility to the new belts to and establish them as serious titles. The decision was made to go with the Iconics as champion, a team that some say will make the titles feel, quote, gimmick comic belts. Regarding mm. her status with WWE, Banks is given a few weeks to think things over before making a decision on a choice that WWE officials believe may have been made a rash decision. Another source noted to the Observer that Banks was given time to figure it out if she wanted to leave the company or stay, but the source couldn't confirm the reason why, and she said Banks probably would not have known about the WrestleMania finish until late, like things change, and did believe that Banks and Bailey were going to be given a chance to make the titles mean something. It was also noted that the logics for Banks and Bailey to assume they would have a run of defending the titles on NXT, Raw, and or, and or SmackDown just because storyline was stated in the first place. Another source 
Check this out. Clear said that Banks was cleared unhappy with speculation on various points over in the past few years with her career coming up with the main roster. If you look at the main roster version, 2015 version of Banks, two different things there. And notice that Banks, after 35, began, she's been, you know, week began when she had Alexa Bliss call a Banks out on Monday Night Raw. Bailey appeared and lost to Bliss in a match, but Banks was nowhere to be seen. She did post some cryptic message during Raw and mentioned that a line that she has used before about feeling magic again, and basically she said she wasn't happy. She said her heart's not in her place. And also with that, she pulled out a Wendy Williams show Tuesday basically call, cause and issues with the staff on the show because it was a late cancellation out of nowhere. Banks announced the cancellation on Twitter and cited personal reasons. Banks added the hashtag if you only knew hashtag to the cancellation post. And uh, she basically just she wasn't stuff's going on. She had a family emergency. She's not going to be booked on the Wendy Williams show. Again, they already said, nope, she ain't going to be booked again because she pulled out. But with everything going on with Banks with this, man, how do you how do you feel about this? Because apparently another thing is she started just recently following AEW and she's taken down her Twitter at, with WWE. What are your and that's thoughts the, on that's all That's the interesting this? thing, dude. What do you because honestly, when you're looking at it, it seems to me like Sasha definitely wants out of her contract and wants out of WWE. But since WWE decided to enact their little, oh, well, we're not going to grant any type of releases at this time stance, I don't see anybody being released anytime soon. So for her to get out, she's pretty much going to end up having to wait out the majority of her contract. But if she ends up deciding to become such a nuisance to them, she could end up just deciding that, hey, I'm not going to wrestle anymore, and they might end up being forced to release her. However... That will really hurt her image in a lot of ways. So I really don't see her doing that. But at the end of the day, you never know. I think if if WWE was smart, they would try to to cater maybe a little bit more to her and maybe listen. Because I do agree that to a certain extent, having the titles for such a short period of time on Sasha and on Bailey, uh, I think is is a little bit more harmful to what that title can mean over time. And I don't feel the Iconics necessarily are a established tag team to the point of being able to be regular tag champs. Yes. So uh, I, I think this was a bad move on WWE's part. However, it's already been done, and you need to try and do something, or you're going to end up losing uh, one of your four women of the that was part of the the big push of the women's revolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they've they failed. They failed. You know how they brought Alexa Bliss in strong and everything and stuff. They should do that with Sasha. They should do that with Sasha at the beginning, right there, because she is so much better as a heel, not a face. And with them bringing her in like they did was just a fuck up. They fucked up. They mm-hmm. did. They they screwed up with the shit because the writer creatives didn't. They don't know what to do with fucking talent from NXT. They don't. They come up and it's like, oh, we got nothing for you. Oh, well, yeah. Look at the perfect example when you're looking at EC3. Yeah. EC3 they brought up and they're not doing a damn thing with them because they don't know what to do with them. So they, they've been in all these little weird vignettes sh- that make no sense. Yeah, they don't know what to do with talent. They have talent right there. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to do with it because it's on their in right there. It's just the talent does what they need to do, but it's the booking and decision and storylines and the creative. It's on them right there. It definitely is on them. It they don't know what to do. Is. They don't know what to do. And talking about creative and writing and stuff, you hear about Road Dog step down as a co-lead writer on SmackDown? I have a theory with that, and I think it's because Road Dog plans on leaving WWE soon because we all know that his good friend Billy Gunn is now over with AEW, so yes. it would only make sense for Road Dog to follow suit, along with a lot of the other greats that have already gone over there, like, you know, Chris Jericho, good old JR, among many others. So mm-hmm. I think this might just be a sign of things to happen. Yeah. Yeah, he's been a lead writer since. 2012 and he Mm -hmm. became a head position writer in 2014 and with James going on the road with the blue brand and he worked with uh, Gargaria he worked out of who works out of the headquarters Stanford 
Word is mm-hmm. that James had become increasingly frustrated with the change made to SmackDown script by Vince McMahon, and he finally hit a, quote, breaking point at Tuesday's post-WrestleMania 35 edition of SmackDown from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. There's no word on yet who will be replacing Road Dogg. Um, Brian James is co-lead writer on the Blue Brand, but sources stated that to PW Insider that the way WWE creative team is set up nowadays, the lead writer is more of a formulae as opposed to Pacific voice that drives the show. Everything pitched for SmackDown comes through the team to Vince, and then he approved approve with Vince, tweaking the script, script until it's time to go on air. There's a word on yet if James will be transitioning to another role in WWE. But yeah, he'll he's going to probably be leaving too. He's going to probably be definitely going to be leaving because the, the creative writing is not like it used to be back in the Attitude Era. You had Vince, Vince Russo was one head writer and he had all these other people writing underneath him and he reported everything in Vince. Vince had to tweak things to how he seen fit. He got the last word. It just, it just looks just it's fucked up. They got this talent right here. Right now, we got someone in the chat said uh, DT113. Look at what they did to Shinsuke. Exactly. He's fucking Perfect going example. To, perfect example. He's going back yeah, to look, fucking New He Japan. went from wrestling at Mania for the title, and now what is he doing? Yeah, nothing. He was, in, he was on the card in a multi-man tag match for the tag titles. Meh. Yeah. Yeah, him and Rusev should have been already tagged champions already because Rusev was hot. And you notice how it is nowadays. They don't give a fuck about a person who gets uh, pushed. Look what they did to Ty Dillinger. They silenced mm-hmm. a perfect 10 and they released his ass. Yeah, it's that was just, a waste of talent too. Yeah, definitely, it's a waste of ass. I mean, talent. I mean, just it just frustrates me. They got talent. Perfect. Another example. Look at Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze and what's his name? Neville. Back when Neville was in NXT, those guys tore down the fucking house every night on house shows in NXT. Mm -hmm. Fucking great talent, great wrestlers. Pac. He's Pac now in AEW. His original ring name. Yeah, Tyler Breeze. He's like, they're not doing it to me. I don't know what the hell. They're, there's another waste of talent right there. You can oh, he's going to be another one that's going to be in AEW. Exactly. And then, of course, a perf- another good example. They were a badass tag team in NXT, The Ascension. Look what happened to them. Crap. Yeah. And then wh- what the hell happened to Arthur Sapain? Mm-hmm. Crap. <laughs> Crap. They're, they're doing house shows. That's all they're doing. Yeah, hey, Vince doesn't know what he's doing anymore. That's why he needs to turn it over to Trips. But we've done this yeah. for a long time. But did you catch any of that Hall of Fame ceremony? Oh yes, I did. The Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame. That attacker. I sent you that tweet right there, or I messaged you right there during the Hall of Fame. I'm sitting. Yeah, back I was watching the, it live. That was crazy. Yeah, I'm sitting back, just join myself, and then listen to Bret Hart talking about. T- t- everything that he's going through during his induction speech because I I like and I followed everything that Bret Hart's went through in his career. And all of a sudden, you got this fucker come running up on the stage, the screen go black, and I'm like, what the fuck happened? I'm like, did some jackass just attack Bret Hart? And so I got on Twitter there and looking at different footages and stuff, and then one good angle someone put up, he fucking tackled his ass and took Natalia down. And then, you know what's crazy? All the wrestlers, a lot of them jumped in the ring and atta- you know attacked this guy. And what was funny was the first guy there holding the guy down and beating him in the face was Ronda Rousey's husband, man. <laughs> did you see the mug shot in this dude? <laughs> oh, that was crazy. <laughs> and then did you see the footage from the, another person that... Um, when he was walking, they're taking him away from the ring. Uh, Dash Wilder from the uh, revival walked up, and he was like, "Boom!" Uppercut. Oh yeah, he <laughs> stuck him right in the face and just walked off. It was sickening. Uh, oh yeah, it was great. DT one thirteen says there was rumors that Vince was going to ban all live crowds from shows. Oh god, he would do something like that. The scene, his fucking scene, how ass would do something like that? No, the, that wouldn't happen. Bret Hart or uh, Triple H would not talk come out of it. 
Who knows, man? Vince, I mean, look what they did to AEW shirts. I mean, that's another another yeah, story there. But That is true. But yeah. speaking of AEW, but, I uh, I heard there's some rumors swirling around. There is. There There is some rumors swirling around. But I want to add one last thing about the Hall of Fame before we move on to that. Remember Bret Hart? Talking about Bret Hart. Remember his induction ceremony? Yeah. Remember how he mentioned Vince? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apparently, Vince didn't want his name mentioned in anything on the speeches. However, one of the writers, Robert Evans, was fired this past week because he was fired during the induction ceremony right there in the fucking gorilla position when, when that was going on for Bret Hart's speech because uh, he mentioned Vince, and Vince has strongly stressed for years that he does not want to be mentioned or praised during the Hall of Fame speeches, according to BW Insider. To the point that it's becoming a running joke. And when Vince was mentioned during Brett's speech, Evans reportedly took the blame as the writer and producer of his segment, and he was fired right there backstage at the gorilla position as the ceremony was going on, which led to the Triple H uh, funny segment about about don't call Vince, don't thank Vince. That's just it's crazy shit. But AEW. AEW may be getting a TV deal here soon. You heard about that? Oh, yeah. This is big news. And as was broken uh, by sources over at The Wrap, uh, therap.com, that <clears throat> they knew a person with knowledge of the negotiations told them that uh, the that AEW All Elite Wrestling uh, might be nearing a deal and has at least entered into uh, advanced talks with Turner. Yes. And might end up with AEW and Turner, which is now owned by AT and T, uh, to hammer this out, and you might see AEW more than likely end up on TNT. That would be awesome, man! Be like the old WCW days, Monday Nitro. Now, here's mm-hmm. the question: What day of the week will we see AEW? Well, that's still speculative. A lot of people don't know because the big thing that is that the conversations surrounding the deal are, are really complex, and they say that nothing is imminent. So those kind of details nobody would even know yet. But I said having a pack uh, to announce by uh, mid-May is something they're really looking heavily into. So <clears throat> we could definitely see an announcement within the next month or so of uh, a AEW and possible a Turner deal come to the forefront and another thing that they're looking at is the fact that even though AEW does look like that this is probably all go through they'll end up on TNT uh, Shahid Khan uh, says that they are still exploring multi-platform uh, approach and using things like Bleacher Report Live and things like that so definitely going to be interesting uh, when that comes into play as well but uh, it looks like Turner right now is the front runner to land the weekly TV deal yeah I I could see I could see AEW landing on TNT, and maybe maybe they have AEW has also you know how they've trademarked a lot of names here recently. Mm-hmm. One one previous note was that AEW has trademarked the quote Tuesday Night Dynamite name. So mm. I could see them going head to head with SmackDown. I could, I too, could. just because I think they could really beat SmackDown in the ratings. Yes. Uh, but it really just depends. It, it really depends on where they want to go with it because there's so many openings. You know, Thursdays and Fridays are still open. <clears throat> Saturdays, if you really wanted to. Uh, you could go head-to-head with NXT on Wednesdays. You can go head-to-head with SmackDown on Tuesdays. One thing, though, that I am going to say is I don't think they're going to go head-to-head with Raw. No. I think they're going to try to avoid that as much as possible because they know as a fledgling upstart, they're not going to want to try and go after the big dog on the big night right off the bat. No, they don't. They don't. They want to pull. They want to pull at Eric Bischoff with WCW. They definitely don't want to do that. They want to play it smart. And I believe with the trademark name Tuesday Night, I could see them going up head to head with SmackDown on Tuesday Night because if AEW sure. does land a TV deal by October of what I read here too, if they land something in October and things go through Tuesday Night, they'll start off doing that right there. And then for a while, and when they build up a big audience, a bigger audience with TV, then I could see them transitioning over to a Monday night and going head to head. We'll have Monday Night War 2.0, like everyone has talked about, and it's it will happen. 
It will happen or it may not happen. They may stay on Tuesday night and just play it safe. Hey, you never know. There's a lot of different ways it could turn out, but I guess we'll just have to stay tuned and find out. Yep, we definitely will. And what do you think about the signees and everything that's been going on with AEW coming out well, here recently? They've been uh, really sucking up everybody yeah. <clears throat> who has uh, uh, been coming available. When you look at it, uh, Pac has already come over. Kenny Omega's in there. Uh, so they, they've gotten, been able to get a lot of great guys. Uh, Hangman Page, all kinds of awesome stuff. So I'm definitely interested to see who else they might be able to pull off because mm-hmm. I don't think they're done yet. No, they're not. They're not. One thing one thing I have to say is that a friend of mine recently sent me a photo talking about AEW. Remember last year when I was at the Ocean Center here in Daytona Beach? Remember when I went to see New Japan and Game Chang- Changer Wrestling? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Well, oh yeah, I got some news for you. They're coming back again. Nice. June 29th, Game Changer Wrestling with AEW Wrestling. Mm, not surprised <laughs> by that. All I got to say is... Well... <laughs> nothing. Yes. You have nothing to say about it. Yeah. That's what I got to say, man. <laughs> That's what I got to say. <laughs> That's what I got to say. Yeah, it's coming back the June 29th, man, at the Ocean Center. So be sure to check that out, man. For Definitely sure, check man. Check that out. Well, god dang, man. We covered a lot of stuff tonight. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like old times. I know. I know. Definitely, man. We're both running two hours here. And I think we've come to the end. We come to the finish we line. We have come to we the made finish it. line. We made it. We made it. So basically, we are. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. I want to thank everyone that tuned in tonight here on the ALS Uncut. And we tune in and listen and watch. And I want to thank everyone for the interactions tonight here on ELS Uncut. And before we leave, Chris, what mm. do you got going on? All kinds of insanity. All kinds of insanity. I've been definitely been taking a hiatus from the Chris Carnage show, but I do have things in the works for that. So definitely make sure that you check out the Chris Carnage page on Facebook at backslash Chris Carnage official and on Twitter at Planet Carnage and check out all things that are going on with Chris Carnage. And definitely make sure that you go check out all the past episodes of the Chris Carnage show on podcastcity.net backslash Chris Carnage show. A lot of great stuff there. And also, if you want to look at the final score and get your sports fix, Definitely need to check out Final Score on Facebook at backslash PCN Final Score and on Twitter at PCN Final Score. Check out all the great stuff we have going on. We're very, very active on social media, so do not hesitate to drop us a line and see what we got going on. And also, give us a share and show us to all your friends so they can get in on the fun too. If you want to check out our episodes and download them for the go, definitely go to pcnfinalscore.podbean.com and download all of our latest episodes available now. You can also listen to us now on Google Play Music, Spotify, and on the iTunes Store. Just go on to all three of those platforms, search keyword Final Score, and listen to all of your favorite episodes right now and also catch me and craig at the daytona beach comic con this sunday april 14th as we'll be up there to visit the super radio brothers and talk a little bit about final score and some sports so definitely make sure you come out to the daytona beach comic con event over at the embry riddle uh campus this april 13th and 14th so definitely come out nice i do want to mention that tomorrow it's Record Store Day, and guess where I'm going to be heading at early tomorrow morning? Where are you going? Atlantic Sound Records. That would be the last time, or not the last time. What the hell am I? What? Nah. Never mind. Something else. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at something in here that said the last time. I was like, what? No. I haven't been the last two, two years. Last time I went, I'm looking right in front of me, 2016. I think and me and Derek, me and uh, the beer guy went last year. Yeah, you and got actually you guys did. You went and set up a table, did yep. PCN stuff. 
But one thing I have to say is tonight, ladies and gentlemen, during the Sponsor Ad Podcast Network, that was the last time you've heard anything mentioned about Atlantic Sound Records. We are parting ways, unfortunately, but you know what? We will still go buy, go there because it's a cool place to buy stuff in town. And yep. uh, we will go there and shop because they got great music and everything. But, however, with the sponsorship stuff, that's a little different story for a different day. But, anyhow, we are officially done with ELS Uncut. Mm. And be sure to check out every release show next week with wrestler Damian Saint on the Everett Lee show. I will have a one-on-one with him finally, and I'm happy for that. Yeah. So, yep. I definitely am. So Yeah, fans. Yep. Be sure to follow more Everett Lee over on Facebook. The Everett Lee show, Twitter at the Everett Lee's lower, lower score Lee. And of course, wow, wow. On Instagram, Everly Show. Subscribe to Everly Show over on YouTube for the audio portion. And that is it. Everly signing off. Everyone, have a good night, a good week. We'll see you again next time for the ELS Uncut. Peace.